Hello and welcome to GT Rail Fan Productions and today we have episode 2 of Diesel Discussions. Now today I have obviously A Train 0105. Aiden, say hello. Hello. And we also have our guest Ethan on here, a friend from North Carolina. Say hello, Ethan. Hello. And we're going to have many topics to talk about. Um, Ethan I met in 2016. Very good friend of mine. Uh, Chase 611 back in 2017. A very, very fun time. And I can't wait to hopefully get down to meet up with you again. And, um, you know, it's going to be nice to hopefully get to see you again. Yeah, man. Uh, looking forward to it. But, um... Basically, if you want to give us like a rough, you know, maybe how you got into the hobby just slightly a bit to let the viewers know uh, how you got into trains and maybe your passion for diesels. Well, my mom has always told me it's been since day one. Um, for as long as I can remember, I've just always loved trains. And growing up, I mean, it was only a few years ago that I really started getting into it, learning what type of locomotives were and how to spot them and train symbols and all that stuff and well here I am I'm now volunteering at several different museums and rail ops and all kinds of stuff hoping to have a railroad career or two yeah yeah that's awesome um I know you said you've uh volunteered at the North Carolina Transportation Museum I believe there's a local uh museum that you yeah. volunteer at as well called the Southeastern Narrow Gauge and Short Line Museum in Newton, North Carolina. Oh, okay. And have you volunteered at, I believe, TVRM? If I, am I wrong about that or no? Yes, TVRM as well. Oh, nice, nice. Cool stuff, cool stuff, man. I wish I could uh, do those things, you know. We just don't have as many uh, museums like that up here, especially. Yeah. Only museum we have um, is the Lakeshore Railway Museum. <laughs> Aiden and I... Uh, just haven't really got around to getting over there yep but um the first topic we're going to basically what we're going to do with this is we're going to um the topics we have for today we're going to basically go geographically so we have the first topic we're going to start with stuff in the north and first topic we're going to start with is the new hope in ivy land uh they recently just scrapped a bunch of locomotives there GEC 30-7 and a couple CSX B36 dash sevens I mean one C39 dash eight oh it was there was also a C39 dash eight I didn't even see that yep wow um that's kind of sad not that makes me <laughs> feel even worse about them getting scrapped a C39 dash seven that's hard to come across just in general it was number 8211. Oh, no. That's off. Aiden, that's off the Pennsylvania North uh, uh, Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. They're, doing, they're doing dumb things, man. <laughs> dumb things. I can agree there. I mean, the heritage of the three GEs that we were referring to previously, they're all seaboard. The C30-7, number 7087 was i believe the last family lines paint c30-7 in north america oh i believe God. there are a couple in brazil that were converted to narrow gauge obviously no longer wearing the family lines paint but dude i want to cry right now because those those are like Aiden and I have like an infatuation with like family lines paint and like gray ghost, like just gray paint schemes and family lines is definitely like one of our favorites. And same here. I mean, I've got two engines right here in the South with me. Yeah. We'll, we'll get, we'll get to those later or a little bit later in the podcast, yep. but uh, yeah, definitely. That's a shame that the family lines C30 dash seven. I mean, I, I mean, does anyone, do you know what, caused them to scrap it like i know it hasn't run in a few years but i just it had some kind of major mechanical issue where i believe when they tried to load it it wouldn't load and it just it, you know it couldn't create power to the traction motors so you yeah know, if you don't have power to the traction motors you can't run it 
Yeah, that's a shame, man. I mean, I don't know what there could have been done, really, if if you're saying that is major. I mean, just kind of sucks no, I mean, it couldn't have There been... was no making it run again. Right. Without replacing the whole entire prime mover. But I still think it would have uh, at least been nice to cosmetically save that engine. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe to cosmetically save it, put it in its own, you know, uh, original family line scheme you know but yep a lot of stuff you know comes down to the money aspect of it and obviously it was probably easier maybe cheaper for them just to scrap it yep but the b36-7 were csx y and two paint and you i believe those were xc board if i'm not mistaken both of them were man that's that's a shame too because those B thirty six dash sevens, you just don't come across those either. I mean, they're probably more common than C thirty dash sevens, but still, old GEs you just don't come across, and it's quite a shame that they had to be scrapped. They couldn't have at least been uh, cosmetically saved, you know, if they had major major problems with, you know, whatever the case may be. Yep. I know the C thirty nine dash eight. The, you said it was, what was the number? 8911? 8211. 8211. If I I'm believe not... it belonged to the Pennsylvania Northeastern. Yes. Originally from Conrail. Yep, it's, that is the NS uh, Pennsylvania Northeastern C39-8. And that was, that one was operational years ago, but it was just, eventually, I think it had some mechanical failure where it was just like, okay, parts unit now for 8212 which still wears the conrail blue paint schemes to this day but a lot of it's patched the logos and such yeah i mean those older ge's they do get worn out over time but they can be rebuilt right and they can be saved i mean surely some short line would have liked to have those Oh yeah, definitely. I'm sure a museum would have not had mind to maybe acquired those locomotives. Potentially the four axles. I'm not so sure about the six axles, just due to the size, right? And weight. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely just a shame that a lot. It's just a lot of historical significance with those locomotives. Just. Yep. But um, our next topic we'll move into is the Midwest Preservation uh, Railroad Society, which they're located in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, the New Hope and Ivyland is in like southeastern Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken. So if you guys were curious where they were, um, they apparently have decided to paint a GP10. Now, nobody really knows what they're painting it into it's just oh we have a gp10 here now it's it just got sandblasted and primer now it's going to get painted into something so well isn't it x one central um it looks like a Padu Padu i'm not sure what it actually is um i just all of a sudden i just see a post you know like midwest they have right now they're uh storing reading 2100 you know the t the other yeah. t1 being restored and they're trying to restore Grand Trunk and Western um, 4070 no, 40, back to you know operation, but I don't know how well that's going. But aside from that, they just they have a lot of like stuff that's just being housed there, and they do do some repaints and house locomotives for leasing companies. So I didn't know if this was a locomotive from a leasing company, possibly, or you know maybe it's one of their own potentially because um i know a lot of those gp10s uh were lease company engines right um definitely looks you know rebuilt in my opinion you know possibly well looks they rebuilt. were built from gp9s to 10s yeah with the paducah air filter move the headlight to the nose yep yep it's definitely uh cool to see uh that there's this gp10 it's like kind of like you're on edge waiting like what's what's going on you know yeah but um definitely will be cool to see what the paint scheme will be for this locomotive for sure 
Um, yeah. Aiden, you still there? Yeah, I've been uh, doing some research, and the, that um, New Hope and Ivaland 7037 might not be the last LNN C30-7 out there. Oh, really? So, in 2017, actually it might be earlier than that, but I found a trains magazine for 2017. CSX donated a C30-7 to, uh, let me see, what is it? CSX donates Marshall Uni University GE C30-7 to a nonprofit group. It is number 1837, which was a yard slug, but it was LNN, um, let me see, 7067. Interesting. Let's in, that's good to know. Where is it at now? Um, last picture, um, Huntington, West Virginia. Okay. What's the date on it? Uh, the Trains Magazine came out in September, uh, fifteenth, twenty seventeen. All right. Well, that's good to know. I believe it's uh, gutted out though. Most likely, hey, probably. Still better than nothing. Yes, very yeah. true, very true. I know for, uh, if I'm not mistaken, did not did Ray at the Lakeshore Railway Museum say that Chessie System 8272 had uh, its internal still? Like yeah, internal it components? It, it just needed some like internal components to really get it up and running? Yeah, it needs like 10 grand worth of parts or something like that. Interesting. I forget what it was. I want to say it's like cooling and maybe a turbo. Okay. Definitely cool to hear that they actually there is an LNN C thirty dash seven out there. Yeah. But uh, did you find any information on the Midwest Preserv or yeah Preservation Railroad Society a GB ten or just nothing? Because I couldn't really find nothing. much. Yeah. Because I like I don't have any like. Um, numbers for the locomotive or anything yeah it's so. kind of really hard to know <laughs> it's anybody's guess at this point but yeah that'll be cool to see curious to find more information on it if it is a leased locomotive or if it is a you know part of their museum yeah but um we're gonna move on now more to the southern part of the united states and we're going to talk about the uh, Yadkin Valley Railroad. Now, some of you might not know of this railroad. It's a short line in North Carolina. Does does it dip into Virginia? At uh, no, they actually don't go into Virginia, but they get pretty close. Yeah, I thought they did. I didn't know for sure if they dipped into Virginia by chance. Um, this railroad, the Yadkin Valley, recently. Due to PSR on the Class 1s, a lot of, you know, secondhand power has been available on the market for a lot of short lines. And, you know, the Yadkin Valley took a good look at CSX, CSX's um, SD60Is and M's. and Purchased pick, a total of six of them. Yes, yeah, six of them. And I don't know if they're... There might I, I believe some of them may be 60Is or 60Ms, but I know... All of them are 60Ms, to my okay. knowledge. Okay, 60Ms for sure. I know 8781 for sure was a 60M, so I didn't know all the other unit numbers. Um, six. If you don't know that 8781 is the only uh, Y2SD 60M, and it is a parts unit, according uh, to Ethan. Yeah, I mean, they haven't taken many parts off of it, but it's... It hasn't even moved since like 2018. I know. I was I was really pumped when I heard that the Yadkin Valley had bought it, and I was like, yes, like because according uh, to an employee, when they got it, um, and they tried to fire it up for the first time, it, it nothing happened. <laughs> after some mechanical work and with the ignition and whatnot, it just still would not fire. Man, that sucks. I mean, that's likely just a cause of it being dormant yeah, for that, so many years. Very true. Before that. I mean, I know I caught it 
in early 2017. I actually caught it on my birthday in 2017. And that's, I just have a connection with it because it's just like, I got it on my birthday. Like, that's, that's awesome. And it was actually one of my favorite units just because of the Y and 2. And I actually liked the 60Ms. Like, those were one of my favorite locomotives on CSX. So to see it in Y and 2, my favorite paint scheme was kind of cool. A shame that it's, you know, a parts unit, but there's really nothing you can do when it comes down to the fact that it wouldn't start up and they tried to fix it and nothing. Yep. But at least it's still there, I guess you could say. It's not it's not gone, it's not scrapped like, you know, the CSX B thirty six dash sevens, the C thirty nine. Well, I mean, I highly doubt that they will scrap it. They could take the frame, send it to K L W and uh put a Cummins engine in it. They could. Wow. I never thought about that. Though typically when something goes to K L W for an entire rebuild it comes out solid black. Yeah. I wouldn't expect it to uh, come back in its wine to uh, paint, at least. Sadly. I mean, the one SE32C is at Yadkin Valley, number 3200. It, um, it has a redding inspired paint scheme. The hmm. black, green, and gold. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that. Yeah, by the way, uh, for the photos that are some of these photos that are presented in this are actually supplied by Ethan. So, um, thank you for, you know, uh, showing or showcasing some of your photos for this podcast. We really appreciate that. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Um, the other locomotives that recently just showed up there, which had, I mean, some people do know and some people don't, but it, it has people, the people that do know has everybody in a stir crazy. Um, and I, mean, as, I was so surprised to hear about this right myself. Yeah, it, I mean, it was, it was, when I saw them moving, okay, I just thought, okay, they're going, you know, bye-bye, you know, nothing really thought, you know, I, they would go somewhere, like a short line, and, you know. Still all wearing the, the paint. Too. Yeah, yeah, that too was like, okay, the patches, you know, the they unpatched the locomotives and all that, and then it was like, okay, well, they might be, who knows where they're going, and. I think it did say they were going to uh, the Knoxville, you know, um, what what's that place called? Knoxville Locomotive Works, owned by the Gulf of Ohio, or more formally known as G&O. Okay, yeah. It did say they were going there. So, I figured, okay, they're getting scrapped or whatever, you know, or they're just going to sit in this facility for God knows how long, you know? Well, KLW loves to rebuild things with Cummins engines, so... <laughs> Well, especially since one of the locomotives actually, I believe, was, had, or wasn't it an X Cummins, you know, had an X Cummins engine or something. It was being tested with Cummins. Yeah. The, I mean, they pretty much take an engine that was an unsuccessful rebuild and make it better. Yep. And if you guys don't know the locomotives we're referring to, it is NS, previously NS8520, which is the red main paint scheme if y'all ac 44 c6 f the only one ever well i can't say built because it was previously existing but the only one ever that rolled out of the shop right and that one i believe was the only one that got like really any testing out of like all of them if you get what i'm saying like 8520 was on the western new york and pennsylvania railroad well it's uh, the only one to ever exist though Right, yeah, the uh, that class of locomotive, you're correct, yep. Um, they did a lot of testing with it, and from what I heard with, <laughs> from, you know, just the talk with the, lo you know, the GEs and stuff like that, with 8520 especially, um, apparently it leaked a lot of oil. Um, they were having a big, big oil problem with it, and wheel slippage. Just, they, yeah, didn't, they that, didn't like it. And uh, I heard that once it got up to a certain load that it would shut off oh no are you kidding me yeah i mean that was the problem that i heard i mean i had wow. never heard about any of the things that you mentioned so whether that's true or not i don't know yeah well, i mean that's just what i heard but i mean you i'm sure you've heard things too and you've stated that i mean i never heard that that's if that's true and the things i said that were true you know uh it's just that's a lot of problems and that's a no-no <laughs> just 
you don't want those problems, especially with a locomotive well, shutting off with a certain amount of, of a load of a train. Well, my load, I mean certain, um, like, amperage. Oh, amperage. Once they got to a certain notch. Oh. That's what load is okay. on locomotives. I I was I thought you were referring to the uh the load or the tonnage or whatever of the train. My bad, my bad. But yeah, that's not good. <laughs> hey, I need a notch six and puts it in notch six and it dies or it shuts off. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly what happened. Not good. And then not only that, the amount of oil, you know, if they had the oil issue and the wheel slippage. I mean, the NS probably took the ballasting off the engine when they did that probably i don't know it just it was a major uh, well maybe not major but it was just it just wasn't a good engine sadly yeah and it, it in my opinion that was probably the best main paint scheme other than the blue ones just that's my opinion the red was i very mean it's sharp. bright it stands out right I like the light blue on 4000 and 4001, but the red just was like, it, it hit different. Like Yeah, it was like, I mean, it's brighter than the blue because the blue can blend in with the sky. Right, right. It just, it gave you a different feel and let's be real, I mean, there's not, that type, like that red and the gray just complements the paint scheme itself. They did very well. They went very well together. Yes. Now, it, one thing I was looking forward to when that thing rolled out of the shop was seeing it and the ACCs together. Call them the ketchup and mustard duo. <laughs> the ketchup and mustard duo. I never even heard it referred to as that like that. That's kind of... That's great. <laughs> now I'm going to start calling them that. <laughs> ketchup and mustard duo. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, um... NS8520, I think, had a very nice paint scheme, and it just wasn't... Let I mean, we don't really see red as a very common um, paint. Hard to keep clean. Yeah, it's very hard to, you know, to keep clean, and it's just something that you don't come across a lot of the time when it comes to railroads. I'm just... I don't see red very common, honestly, other than CP. I mean, you have CP, but... Let's be real. That's a different tone of red. It is, yeah, it's a different tone, and they don't keep their units clean whatsoever. I'm sorry, they're not clean, so they're not really that interesting or like, oh! I mean, that's their, that's their regular paint scheme, so <laughs> it's not really important to keep it clean. <laughs> Dirty red. <laughs> I mean, do you ever get to see a CP um, pretty often, or does it not get to you or get down um, there? Here on the Norfolk Southern S line, PSR took a real bad hit to it. Um, so we don't have any more through trains. Oh, yeah. Uh, you used to right. see CP stuff, but occasionally it hits the CSX clinch field okay. um, on the oil trains. Though most of it gets pulled at Russell, Kentucky. Dang, that sucks. They typically swap the power. Yeah, that's that's due to like horsepower hours and all that fun stuff. That and, and like the grades on the clinch field will wear out an engine. Really, I mean, I know they're. I know the grades are pretty tough out there. I didn't know they really take you know take a course on an engine. Yeah, they don't really. For, that's just from what I hear. I mean, those engines are strong, but pulling those loaded oil trains, those yeah. are heavy. Definitely, definitely. And you have the drag from the curves and stuff. Yeah, a very twisty, uh, turny, winding railroad and mountainous terrain. Yeah, it has so, over 40 some tunnels. Yeah. I definitely definitely want to visit the Clinchfield line one day. I mean, it just it's so scenic in my opinion. Just a very very scenic very line. Very easy to chase, too. Ooh. <laughs> I'm rubbing my hands now cuz <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> but um all the other engine that um was it's uh 1998 which is previously CECX 1919. So, um, I don't. I don't even know the designation of that engine. I really like don't. What exactly it is. If I remember correctly, like, it was like a test between, like, I think it was a test between, like, EMD and, like, Cummins or something like that. 
It was something Likely weird. Correct. It it sits You're on an correct. EMD chassis. It's a EMD slash Cummins mix. Yeah, and right. it, what was the? Do you know the horsepower by chance? What it was rated to? Wasn't it like fifty? Like it was like I think it was like five hundred five thousand horsepower or something like that. Cr something crazy. Oh, I don't. I I can try and find it. Okay. Any other uh, research you found on it, Aiden, or any of the uh, locomotives? Notes are just Cummins test bed uh, QSK-95 built in uh, 99 as a UP SD90 Mac-H, uh, and that was number 8558. Okay. Yeah, I believe it was an X... Yeah, it was an XSD90 Mac. So and the coolest thing about that to me for that engine, I got up close to it while I was getting pictures of them. That thing still has a mechanical bell. No Something way. Not too, not too common on rebuild locomotives. Yeah. Especially all our car bodies replaced. It's, yeah, especially that's actually very cool. I mean, what was your experience when um you got to go up, you know, and see these locomotives up close? I mean, you were well. We, we kind of knew about them seen... because of you. 8520 before I saw it in Altoona when I was uh, taking a trip with a few friends up there the most interesting part about it to me is that now it's in my backyard pretty much like I saw it up there just sitting in the deadlines awaiting its fate and now it's right here right on a short line that used to have nothing but jeeps but now they have these big old six axles yeah how do you feel about um these no like new locomotives coming in and kind of you know taking over i mean i don't well, know how you still, feel it's interesting to me because i can still see those four axles they typically well gno owns it they're kind of like gnw they're a holding company and they they move power around a lot uh the four axles they got sent off for rebuild some of them and then some of them went to the lancaster and chester railroad in south carolina oh so that's also pretty close to me so I can still see them if I want to Lancaster and Chester definitely definitely railroad on my bucket list Yadkin Valley definitely has been just bucket list since the 60s Yadkin showed Valley up is yeah hard as crap to chase yeah I know you said something about that I'm like oh man the only train that you can really see is train ET1 or Elkin train 1 it runs west of Elkin turns around i forgot the town name because i've only ever chased it once um but it turns around and when they get back to elk and they split the engines into a push pull oh wow um and then they go down the line not all the way to donahong but uh somewhere in between and meet with the road freight that brings them all the stuff from Winston Yard where they interchange with Norfolk Southern. Oh, that's cool. It sounds interesting for sure. I'm sure we can figure out something, hopefully. If the even... road train is really what's hard to see. But ET1 has had the same two engines for like the past two years. <laughs> Are they, uh... They're like... 60 inches. Okay. And so not So not bad definitely not, not bad. bad but it gets boring after a while yeah i'm sure i mean trust me i know how it feels canadian national sd70m-2s came to replace the ic death stars on the bessemer that's mm. <laughs> i don't even like talking about them because i hate them so much <laughs> <laughs> but um the uh x cummins um sd90 mac that now that is now um, that locomotive uh, KWLX 1998 at the Ogden Valley. It was um, rated at 4,200 horsepower and it has a SCR exhaust after treatment system, a new redesigned cooling system, and dynamic brakes, apparently. It's a uh, tier 4 test bed, or not a test bed, but a, it's a tier 4 unit for Cummins. Oh, okay. So that's cool. 
I wouldn't say it's a test bed, more like a test unit for, uh, like, uh, tier four standards. Right. For Cummins. So, so like, tier four compliance, basically. Yeah, like how the GEs are. Yeah. Okay. So, speaking of testing, from what I understand, those two are only there for a limited period of time uh, for testing. Oh, God. And they'll go back to KLW, get a few of the quirks worked out, and be spread across the system. Oh, boy. Aiden, we gotta get down there. <laughs> Definitely. Now, that's not for sure, but that's just what I've heard. Yeah, we're tr we're hoping to maybe get down there to hit up a lot of those short lines, hopefully, sometime this year. Does the YVR still use 6002? Uh, which one is that? The SD40T-2. Is that the snoot nose? Uh, oh, I don't even think it's there anymore. <gasps> That's dumb. <laughs> I think it went to LNC. I'm not sure. LNC is Lancaster and Chester, by the way. Oh, uh, that might be that blue yeah, 40 T-2. Yeah, the blue SD40T-2 that... and that C40-8 yeah. they have. That's yeah, it's numbered as 6002. Oh. The, 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 the T-2 is its mother unit. Wow, I did not know that. That's yeah, that was some weird rebuild weird. by KLW. Yeah, that is, that's definitely weird, but... Oh well, Lancaster and Chester definitely a cool railroad. Um, I like the paint scheme because of the light blue and white, and they have That's a short. That's not lasting long. Really? They've been. I mean, GNO's been sending a lot of the black engines down there. Oh. I mean, that's <laughs> LNC blue. Uh, t from what I hear, it was the owner's request to keep it blue. But he passed away recently. Oh, great. Now they're painting them black. Aiden, the we gotta get down there. <laughs> McKenna's gonna it. be mad. <laughs> yes. The 2866. Which, which is a high hood GP38 AC. Oh, yeah. I, I saw your shots of that, and I'm like, I definitely gotta see that unit. <laughs> like, it hasn't run in a while. Oh. A turbo blue. Great. <laughs> they were, um, when I went down there, it ran for like another week, and I haven't heard of it running since. Oh. And that was in April of last year? April okay. 2020, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, uh, I saw your shots, and I'm like, I definitely, you know, I've seen other people's shots, but that GP38 uh, AC high hood, I was like, that, that is mint. Like and the paint scheme's just nice in general. Why did it have to pull a three oh two? He's referring to uh, Allegheny and Eastern three oh two. I don't yeah. know if you know of that unit, but um it blew a turbo. So and then it went bye bye, so Yeah. Apparently it's gonna go to KLW here pretty soon. Uh Allegheny and Eastern three oh two? No. Oh, the sixty-six. Oh. Uh, It'll get an Admiral cab. And no. I I'm sorry, but I don't know if you know this, but I have like a burning passion for Admiral cabs. Like I just don't like them. I really don't like Admiral cabs. I just I, I don't, don't prefer them, them. Except for the fact knowing what they used to be. Yeah, that's like what gets me. Like I'm like, oh, this locomotive. Look at this. This used to be a high hood. Man, what a shame, you know? Yeah, I mean, living here in the South along what used to be a pretty predominant Southern Railway line, used to see them all the time, and now there's not a single one within a 50-mile radius. I mean, yeah, they're basically all the ones that are left, they're just, it's scattered. It's like y, it's like CSX Y and 2 EMDs. They're, like, all scattered across the system. And it's quite sad, like... Definitely, like, like bucket less, list is less high than hoods. Ten percent of the whole entire roster at CSX is the line two. Yeah. Okay. We in the first episode of Diesel discussions, we got on the topic about Y and two. Okay, and we were saying, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, 
they were like, you know, I'm sure a lot of people will probably be like, oh, they're, they're foaming over, you know, wine too. But if you really think about it, if you want to be ahead of the ball game, you know, so for example, Aiden and I went to shoot the WMY PM 636s when they were was their last summer, you know, basically before they got put in storage and yada, 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 retired. Yeah. CSX Y and 2, it was, you know, it was pretty common, if, you know, a year or two years ago, you could see it a lot more. But as the years have gone on uh, with all this new power and just, you know, rebuilding everything, repainting everything, it's slowly and slowly disappearing. And, you know, got to get them while you can. I know it sounds, it might sound foamy, but it's le- like you said, it's hey. less than 10%. I mean, it's less than a dime to a dollar. Yeah. So that that puts it really I mean, in reality. One day, if you ask any of the any of the old heads who are in the railroad industry, they'll say, "I wish I would have gone to go see those things more," because they know, like they used to see F units and E units and GP nines and all that stuff, like we see GVOs nowadays, and they're like, "Well, those were so boring. Why take pictures of them?" And now they're like, man, I wish I could just see one. Right. It's definitely... And, I mean, that's a completely different story with steam locomotives. Yeah. Well, I mean, it falls in path, but obviously steam is even more rare than those. Exactly, exactly. It's it's crazy to think, because just basically, if you want to be smart about, like, rail fanning or catching, like, old mm. rare stuff, you know, or stuff that could potentially disappear or is disappearing. If you want to be ahead with the ball game, you make sure you shoot a lot of it. You know, you're just like, I'm going to go out for this because it's common, you know. Now, don't get me wrong, you don't want to overkill it because there's there's a line to be drawn when you're getting videos, photos of the same thing, you know, because it can get boring. But, it like, for example, Y&2s or High Hoods or whatever, you know, that stuff was predominantly common you know, two years ago, and really, really common, you know, four years ago, five years, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. and we just kind of took it for granted. It was like, oh, this Y and 2, that, that's nice, you know? I see this yeah. all the time. Or High Hood, High Hood local, or was on my local job every single day. I, it was always on there. I just never we thought about see, shooting it. We used to see High Hoods on the road here. Oh, man, that would be... Like, that, you'd get a trio of high hood SD40s, commonly. That's hot. Eight, eight, ten years ago. That is hot. I mean, <laughs> now, there's only one left in existence, and we all know where that is. Tennessee Valley Railroad Music. Yep. Sadly. I'm it, not referring to the NW ones, I'm referring to Southern. Yeah, the Southern ones. It's quite a shame to see that a lot of this old classic power that we were used to is disappearing. I mean, it's it's like it's not even like I guess like gradual. It's just like all of a sudden if you get what I'm saying. Like yeah. a lot of the classic power was like at the snap of a finger. Like it wasn't even like we're winding this off, you know, eventually it'll be gone. No, it was like, okay, boom. This is gone. Boom. Well, this is gone. Good news for the high from what I hear, the remaining ones have the RCU, or for those who don't know, remote control yep. uh, unit equipment in them, and it would be, it's not feasible for Norfolk Southern to chop them, since they won't, they don't need to have a crew in them, they can be used as a slug, pretty much. Yep. Def- um, so, there's still going to be some out there, you just may not see them on the main line. Right, it's more of those RC, you know, operations that you're going to, if you, you know, go to see them in a yard, they're probably going to be the yard slave, most likely. Um, which, it kind of sucks, but it's better than not seeing them. For me, my goal is try to get something, you know, a high hood pulling a train, you know, on the main line, or a local job, or something, you know, other than yard work. Yeah. that That's at least a goal of mine for this year, hopefully, I... I can pull it off, but who knows? Yep. All right, so shall we go ahead and talk about Caldwell County? Yes, sir. That that was the uh, locomotives we were referring to that were of family lines uh, heritage earlier. 
It, now, a little shocker that may come to the crowd. These two locomotives are still wearing family lines paint. And to my knowledge, they are the only two left in existence that still wear the family lines paint. I have not seen any pictures of any others or heard about any, and trust me, I have done my studying. Yeah, because they're in your backyard, basically. I mean, I can wake up in the morning and hear them when in the morning, hear the horn in the morning. So, yeah, they're essentially all in my backyard. Yeah, I mean, you're lucky, man. I mean, those are, those now, units are this. nice. Only one and a half of them are still painted family lines. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. There was a recent effort to uh, restore the paint on them. Um, I think it was due to the FRA uh, came in and told them they had to put reporting marks on them and, you know, maybe had to fix some things up. So they figured, okay, let's fix up the paint while we're at it. And they were going to, you know, uh, put the family lines paint back on. At least that's what I was seeing on Facebook from one of the employees. And they got, yeah. what, the cab all painted and they put the reporting marks on it. And then all of a sudden, I think it was, was it due to COVID or was it just, maybe it wasn't even due to COVID, it just up. business picked up and they could not finish it. They couldn't finish painting or putting primer on, you know, the whole locomotive to actually, re, you know, put all the family lines and stuff, fresh paint on it. Now, apparently management is pushing them to go ahead and get it finished. Um just because they've seen all the stuff on Facebook about it. Um, people saying, like, oh, man, it's ugly now. <laughs> and, you know, they may be busy, but they have another engine. Right. But it's sadly, you know... It's in disrepair. Yeah. It runs, but it's not good. Right. And I can understand completely... I mean, they recently have been running almost every day, and about a year ago, you could expect them to only run about one day a week. Yeah, that and, was their schedule I heard, one day a week, typically. And now it's just been back-to-back -back days of them going constantly. And just a few weeks ago, they had a storage contract for 38 woodchip hoppers, um from Blue Ridge Southern, a railroad based out of Asheville, North Carolina. Um, and, yeah, I got to witness that old GP-16 pulling 11 of those up, a, about a, I want to say, about a 3% grade. Yep. Boy, did, I do have to ask, do you have any video of that? I do, but it's not very good. Okay. <laughs> it was backlit all the crap. I just would like to hear the engine roaring. Like, that's all I care. Like, he notched it down by the time he got to us. Oh. Uh, just because they had to slow down to five miles an hour for a curve. Well, yeah, that would make sense. But yeah, um, that that I mean, just seems impressive. Speed on that line now is ten miles an hour, but still, why use air and keep and keep the notches up when you can just notch it down to slow it down gradually? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that catch of yours was definitely cool. I mean, I was like, "Nice, man! Like, nice stuff," you know. And that, yeah. it, even though, like, originally when you told me like they were, they were kind of um halting with the paint, you know, I was like discouraged. I'm like, man, that kind of like ruins it. But you know, I got to thinking about it. And I was like, I mean, when do you get to see, um you know gp16s i mean you just don't come across those first of all and now rj corman has a lot of them but they don't run off right like they're, they're all in the in the rj corman paint scheme yep so yeah there's also not a lot thing, this isn't necessarily a big detail but this is certainly not common on locomotives that are still in revenue service they don't have ditch lights. Right, that's another thing that was like, okay, they don't have ditch lights, which you don't just 
come across that stuff pretty commonly I mean, in 2021. It's an original paint locomotive with no ditch lights. And another thing that I really like, both of them still have their original RS5Ts. Yeah, I know. I was just getting ready to say that. I was like, they have Leslie RS5Ts on them. They, very well maintained RS5Ts. Too. Yes, they are very nice. Insane. Like, you just don't hear Leslie's anymore. Like, you just don't. And I'm like, I want my feeling of Leslie's if I get down there. Like, it, it, it seems like a cool railroad. You'll get it. Yeah. It'll be nice. But, um, yeah. Long rail GP38s replaced our southern GP38s, so. Yeah. It's... It's definitely a cool little railroad if you think about it. And they they run a decent amount, too. It's not like, you know, I mean, it's not like your biggest, like, short line in North Carolina or anything. But, I mean, they run a pretty good distance considering they the two locomotives they have. miles of track running from Hickory, North Carolina to Lenore, North Carolina. Um, though, I think only about 15 miles of that is operational. Though they did go pat, they did go all the way up to the end recently to do the wood chips. Wow! Wood chip so I got to see them do rare mileage. Hadn't seen a train in over five years. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's that's that storage moves are just cool because it like it opens a lot of like different opportunities. I guess from what I've noticed with storage moves, like WMYP for example, they brought the M six thirty sixes out for that you know twice so that was something yep. cool so and then for your example caldwell county pulling 11 woodchip hoppers now their trains usually consist of no more than three or four cars right and it's always tank cars and acf center flow hoppers um i mean occasionally you'll get a cylindrical one but <laughs> it's really no different and I was talking to the crew before they left Hickory still waiting on Norfolk Southern to bring in some more wood chip hoppers um, they said that man I'm just glad that I have something else to look at <laughs> right because it just gets so boring after a while and he said this is the first time in I don't even know how long that we've been able to not see the end of the train <laughs> yeah definitely um definitely something probably different and cool for them like oh yeah like yes finally a new task you know and yep. that's the only thing i would fear about working on the railroad is like if you're running something almost the same every day would you know obviously that would maybe get old it but would get boring i mean they don't get to go fast because of the track right I mean, it has definitely improved over the years as new management has come along, but um, there there used to be places where they just have to take it real slow. I mean, real slow as in a couple miles an hour. Their top speed is ten. So, right, I believe it's isn't it uh fifteen miles per hour? Like, is the limit for no ditch lights? Or is it 20? Uh, 20 or 25. Right. Yeah, I believe it was 20 or 25, maybe. Now, they did run in the night here recently, and the conductor said that headlight was off shining somewhere in the woods and that they'd like to get some magnetic ones, but like they ever had to run in the night again. But for daytime, it's not necessary. No. Yeah, only nighttime it would be like, oh, this might be a little weird. <laughs> And that was the first time they had ever run at night, too. Oh, really? They they've never yep. ever like run at night before. Nope. Wow. Never knew that. I mean, I figured as much. They, you know, stick to day, but you know, I I don't know I mean, much why of the run railroad. A railroad that only sees one train a couple days out of a week in the night. Right. Definitely, definitely makes sense. Another thing with that railroad, they're super easy to chase. One, because of the slow speed. And two, a road follows it most of the way. Oh, there, yeah. The one spot that it's hard to get to is just after Highway 321 in Hickory and up until Granite Falls. Um, they kind of go down in the river bottom. 
and then they cross the river and start climb, climbing the mountain. Yep. Yeah, what's that? I believe when I was researching the line, I, there's like there's this one bridge. That they is that the one river you're referring to? Yeah, Catawba River. Yeah. That I want to. I would like a shot there, but it doesn't look like it's very easy to get one. I've never you seen can it done. Get there, there's roads there, but you got to stand in people's yards, and it's it's not preferable. I mean, it's lake houses, it's rich yeah. people. They're like, why is some weirdo with a camera standing in my yard? Yeah, I noticed the housing, and I was like, well, yeah, probably I've heard not. That some of them are really nice, and that they get rail fans sometimes, and they're like, okay. This is weird, but fine. I'll let you. <laughs> I just figured, like, that's probably really the only, like, trestle slash bridge on the line. At least a big There's one. There's one other, and it is a original wood trestle. Wow. From when the line was snare gauge. And it ran, it actually interchanged with the Lancaster and Chester in Chester, South Carolina. That's awesome. It was the Carolina and Northwestern. Ooh. That's didn't know in the that. Nineteen hundreds, um, they standardized. Ah. Uh -huh. At one point in time, it was narrow gauge, and that's another thing. It runs the exact same path. Um, so the grades are still steep, the curves are still sharp. Right. Yep. That's. I just find the Caldwell County definitely very cool. Um very historical railroad i mean there's some very rich history with that line oh yeah definitely a lot of history just the locomotives the the rail where the rail line just goes simply is just very historical yeah um that line when it was carolina northwestern it, it did go by the southeastern narrow gauge and short line museum which we mentioned previously throughout this podcast right yeah that's cool uh, But yeah, I think we... C oh, the other thing that we were going to cover was the... the Rock uh, Island Rail. Yes, the Rock Island Railroad. Uh, they they decided now, to paint their GP15, I believe now. Yep. Yeah. Have we... Uh, have y'all mentioned anything about them previously? No, we have not. Well, let's go ahead and cover it all. All right, cool. Um... You know, there's a lot of haters that say that isn't really the real Rock Island because of, well, oh, they have dynamic brakes. Oh, they have ditch lights. Oh, no. my goodness. Are you kidding me? No, just <laughs> shut up. Let me tell you this. The owner himself did some research, and apparently the title and the name Rock Island have not been bought. Yeah, and he bought them. And he bought them. So there you go, Fomers. It is the Rock Island. <laughs> yeah. Dynamic breaks or not. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I didn't even hear, like, the hate for it, honestly. I didn't hear that. It was like, oh, they didn't have ditch lights. Yeah, I didn't hear about that. I just, I know he bought the rights to it, and I was like, well, this technically is the Rock Island now, because he... He physically bought the rights. It'd be a different story if he didn't buy the rights. But now that he bought it, that's the new chapter for it. I mean, really, if you think about yeah, it. I mean, dormant for 40 years. Right. But it technically, that is the new Rock Island. I mean, it's Not still... technically. It just is. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. It just, it's, it's amazing to think that the rights to it wasn't bought. And then somebody just like just out of the blue was like, "Hmm, what should I name my railroad?" You know what? I'm gonna look up old fallen flags, and you know what I mean. And they just yeah found one of them that just the rights to it wasn't bought, and was like, "All right, let's do this." Like that's just awesome, in my opinion. And you know, everyone loves that reborn blue, though. Oh yeah, it got commonly called bankruptcy blue. Right. But now it's Reborn Blue. Yep. I just think uh, it's... That was the official name of it back in the day. What, Reborn Blue? Uh, reborn Blue because the company, you know, you go through that bankrupt fa bankruptcy phase where you just, you want to give everything a second chance. Yeah. Um, and see if you can boost the business. You introduce a new look, introduce a new name. 
Um, and well, I guess it didn't really work for the Rock Island, and they brought it back. Yep. I just think it's... The uh, the locomotives they have, they have two GP38s, and now this GP15 that they bought, or repainted. Got a GP30. Um, I've got a C40-8. Yeah. And something else. I forgot what it was, though. Um, I I mean, I could maybe look up the roster right now. But I know that C40-8, I know it's since... There, but I don't know where. It's, the, like, I know Aiden and I have been waiting for them to paint that, like... Lots of people have. Yeah, like, Aiden was, like, I think he's more passionate about it, um, getting painted than I was, but he's like, why haven't they, like, when we saw the GP15 getting painted, Aiden was like, why haven't they painted the C40-8 yet, like... What the I mean, heck? It came from a Class 1 railroad, so it probably had some major mechanical issues they had to sort through. True. But, you know, um, <laughs> we just, we want to see that GE painted in bank, or, well, not bankruptcy blue, reborn blue. I, I just, you know, I think it's going to be I think, think be it cool. would be interesting if they introduced some other paint schemes that the Rock Island had, like the red and white. Ooh. Uh, or the other mustard and ketchup <laughs> mustard and ketchup <laughs> which was the yellow and red scheme uh, that I believe was used for the commuter stuff oh I think I know what you're talking about yeah I think I know what you're talking about yeah they had a very for like a big variety of um, paint schemes for sure I know that for a fact um, yeah. Then I know there's a rock. I know Big Boy met it. Um, it. I believe it was Rock Island. It was some sort of streamliner locomotive. Um, oh yeah, those. Um, and then an E five A and an E nine A. They're in that red and silver. Yeah, I believe those were Rock Island, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, both of them are. Yeah, so I would like to see that. Thirty. What's the other one? I don't remember the number on it. Yeah, I couldn't tell you by heart. Aren't they just, uh... They're just cosmetically. They're not operational. Right? I believe so. Yeah. Because those are nice. I've seen them go, they're always being dragged. They're very... I think those are very stunning streamliner locomotives. For they sure. Are. I mean, pff, those are nice. And I wouldn't mind to see those, you know... Well, that paint scheme on some of the Rock Island rails, uh stuff for sure i think that would be cool my question is are they gonna hold out to do something different with the dash eight like a different paint scheme yeah i'm kind of curious now you mentioned that i'm kind of curious if that if that's the reason why maybe they're they their jeeps or whatever they're like oh we're gonna paint them this the you know reborn blue and then the c40-8 is gonna get a special paint scheme or something different it's, it's the big and pretty one yeah maybe you know i think it would be cool like, just imagine this. If they did get some sort of streamliner locomotives and painted them in that, you know, the red and silver, or maybe even the reborn blue, I think that would look very aesthetically pleasing. It'd look like the Tyco F40s that are more for mass produced and HO scale back in, what, late 90s? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tyco. Gotta love them. Yeah. But I think uh, that railroad's definitely going to be something cool here I'm later. I'm planning a chase down there. I just don't know when. Yeah, like, my, I'd like to goal, go down I'm, there. I've, I've said it. I'm going to go when that Dash 8 gets done. I'd like to get down there someday. The reality of it, though, <laughs> I'm so far away, it's just, I don't know. I'd have a better... Considering that me and you were, like, probably 10 hours apart. Yeah. It's... I've looked it up. It's like 13 hours for me. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, I mean, that's an entire day of driving for you if you were to come this way. Yeah. Well, hopefully I can make it down there. We figure out something as a trip to chase some of the short lines in the area or whatever we find interesting that's in the region. Yeah. That'll that'll be a lot of fun. We'll try to get those that all figured out here soon. But Rock Island Rail definitely bucket list as well maybe not this year but definitely there's no doubt like 
if you don't want to go there, like, come on, like, why don't you want to go there, you know? Like, There's yeah. No reason not to. Yeah, exactly. You're getting a liter- like, a fallen flag that literally disappeared. For, what, that fallen for... flag is no longer a fallen flag. It's not. It's literally living and breathing again. It got raised to full mast again. Yes. I'm glad it came back, too. Like, I I was just surprised, and I'm sure you were surprised, and Aiden was surprised when we all saw, oh, Rock Island Rail. Like, what? What's this? And then we look into it, and we're like, what? Yep. I mean, it all happened so quick, too. Oh, yeah. It was just, like, all of a sudden, just out of the blue. Hey, guys. Rock Island Rail here. <laughs> Like, yep. <laughs> uh, the the only other thing topic wise that we were going to speak on was the Chattanooga and Chickamauga railway. They ran a um, it is a it welded a welded rail train? Yes, and TVRM's uh, power was used. Uh, Southern they lease TVRM engines all the time. You never know what you're going to get because they only have two engines. Yeah, um, and they. They commonly store a hundred plus car coal trains, and those two GP nines can't handle that. No. So they'll bring in one of TVRM's GP thirty eights, whether it's fifty forty four or five thousand or tag eighty, potentially even seven ten. Wow. Oh yeah, I saw seven ten was used one of the at some point. What was cool this time though is that it was just TVRM power. I mean, you had those two. Historically painted locomotives. Yep. It. it was and Southern Railway. It was running on tracks that it used to. Yeah. It was uh, Southern Railway 5000 in the Tag 80. What's, what uh, Tag 80 used to be. Oh, that's cool. Southern. Yeah, it was definitely a very uh, awesome lash up. I mean, that that is just hot. That. <laughs> 5,000 was leaving long head forward. Southern style. Like, bruh. <laughs> and Tag 80 would have led back the correct way because when that thing went to Southern, it had, it was changed cosmetically completely. Right. It, it, it had the horn mounted on top of the cab, uh, had an underframe bell, uh, had no dynamic braking. It wasn't set up to run long head forward. Right. Yeah, definitely, definitely very cool. Uh, that short line, I've noticed, like, recently they were leasing locomotives from TVRM, and I hope that continues, because, I mean, seeing those locomotives in freight operation is just awesome. That's just yeah. super cool to me. I mean, TVRM has a couple customers along their line that they serve regularly, but to see them pulling a, a real big, long revenue train, I mean, they pulled a half-mile consist of welded rail. So, yeah, that's just awesome. Like, I just couldn't get over. Like, you sent that, and I was like, "What? I didn't even know this happened." Like, this is awesome. I'm jealous of the guy who went to go see it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. So, what was your question, Aiden? All right. So, I saw this like a while ago when YVR got those CSX. SD60Ms, I also saw a picture of an executive Mac there. Oh, Is it yeah. still there? Yeah. Alright. I forgot to mention that one. Um, it only came recently. I think sometime during the summer of 2020. Okay. It's number 9540. Alright, because I, I really haven't seen any other pictures of it. Yeah, it's sitting in Winston Yard. It's on the road freight, and the road freight is next to impossible to see. Um, just, yeah, you're not going to see any pictures of it. All right. I've got a couple of them. Okay, we, we you'll just have to send those to me or, you know, yeah. whatever the case may be. But, um... They were supposed to get three of them. Executive they Max? On, yeah, they back. Down on two, and well, they got eighty-five twenty in nineteen ninety-eight instead. Oh, not gonna lie. I mean, ooh, that's that's tough. That is tough to choose between a trio of eighty-five twenty in nineteen ninety-eight. Easy, because it adds more color to the roster. 
I mean, it adds color, but imagine this, a trio of executive Max. I mean... You can still see that on BNSF. True. True. But... I mean, it's not common, but you can still see it. Yeah, you can still see it, but a short line, if you... You know, if it does I mean, happen... the craziest thing about that railroad to me, though, they went from only having five four-axle engines, they got a couple six-axles in there, and now they have, like, what, how, what's the official count? Six SD60Ms, um, one SE32C, the two KLW units, and a Mac. Okay. That's what, like, ten engines? Yeah, that's definitely a lot. So, I mean, they really honestly tripled their, their capabilities. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to bring up... I, I didn't even think about that, the Executive Mac. I can't believe I forgot about it. But, uh, yeah, thanks, Aiden, for uh, bringing, that up. bringing that up. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Any more questions? I mean, I don't have any more questions. Okay. Okay. So, so I think we're about think we're good. About good. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap it up for the night. I've got work early in the morning, so... All right. All right. So... That's about all the topics we have for you today on episode two. I hope you guys enjoyed. I appreciate Ethan coming on the show. He didn't have to, but he did. He and you know gave well, us something. Definitely it, glad to. I enjoyed it. I oh yeah. Heck yeah, man. I definitely enjoyed having you, and you gave a lot of insight on these short lines that are typically around you. You know, and you had some knowledge on some of the stuff that wasn't around you. So, um, definitely was nice to have you on here. And hope to have you on again, for sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yep, and thank you for Aiden coming on. Thank you. Um, you didn't have to get on, but you chose to. Um, and appre I appreciate <laughs> the research. No problem. So um, we're just going to wrap this up, and um, we hope everyone's having a good year so far and hope everyone's having a good day, you know. And uh, Ethan and Aiden, you're going to be signing out. Yep, I'm signing yeah. off. See you later. All right, All GT right. Real fans signing out. See ya.